you're using Zoom meeting and you wanna go from having a speaker who is spotlighted to more of a gallery view group discussion, well, this is a question that I had a client bring up in an event that I worked recently, and I will walk you through step-by-step step what your options are in Zoom meeting from the host or co-host perspective. So I'm gonna walk you through it and maybe explain a couple times of why you might wanna use it. Before we jump into it, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and I do wanna remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I do videos about virtual event production, hybrid, Zoom, as well as producing just events and running your own business. And if you like more free content, I am the co-host of the Better Events Podcast. You can listen wherever you listen to podcasts. And we do interviews with other event professionals and dive more into some of these topics that I've done YouTube videos on. But again, if you just love free content and you're trying to educate yourself as an event professional, I cannot recommend it higher. And if you've been waiting to add Zoom and Zoom events as a virtual event producer to your event toolkit, well, you're in luck. I'm going to be hosting a workshop series here at the end of this month, at the end of June. It will be a three-part series, including some office hours with me where you can talk to me about your specific event. But I'm going to walk you through exactly how I produce events in Zoom meeting, in Zoom webinar, and how I use it just as a business owner and how I've used this as an added service that I now pitch to clients. And one of the things I can't say enough is how much Zoom is going to be here forever. You know, it's going to be around. And so training yourself now, whether you're an independent event planner, you work for an agency, or maybe you're an in-house planner or event person, this training is for you. I'm going to have you leave and be able to do events just like I do. And if anything, I'm hoping I can build a nice referral network so that when I get too busy, as I have lots of inquiries coming in, I can refer you business as well. So link below in the description for you to sign up for that. Without further ado, let's get back into spotlighting and gallery mode. Okay, so to set the scene, and I'm just gonna pretend like you haven't seen any of my videos, the caveat to being able to experiment and test spotlighting is you have to have three people in your meeting. One, two, three. The way I usually do this as a single person when I'm trying to test things is I'll often put in three devices. So you can see I have my iPad and my phone. So you get to see all the different angles of, of Logan here. Um, but once you have all three people in the meeting, you will see I'm the co-host, but I, anytime I either toggle over the three dots, I will see the op op ability to pin or to spotlight. I have a whole video about the difference between pinning and spotlighting, small version, pinning is local, meaning just controlling what I see, spotlight is for everyone. So, all right, so here we are in Zoom. We're gonna pretend my iPad is my speaker, so I'm going to spotlight my speaker for everyone. Let's say my speaker presented, present, 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 and now they are ready for the live Q&A. Now in Zoom webinar, you have a couple more features where you can then show gallery of all of your panelists and things like that. In Zoom meeting, it really only gives you two view options and the only one I can control is speaker view. So you have speaker view or gallery view. You also have immersive, which that's fun to play with. I could probably do a whole separate video on that, but I'm controlling with spotlighting the speaker view. At any time during the presentation, attendees or your speaker could go to gallery view and see everyone. And I've had some presenters who love that. They love seeing everyone they're talking to. But say you want to direct people to be in gallery view, this is where I would encourage folks via the chat to drop a message in that says something like, hey, we're going into the Q&A section. If you'd like to view your entire group or cohort or all the attendees from the up in the right hand corner, select view, then select gallery. And that's gonna show you everyone. And the thing I like here is I don't unspotlight the speaker. I'm leaving them spotlit. So if some of the attendees, maybe they're on mobile or they're on a tablet and it's not easy for them to get into gallery view, they're still just seeing the presenter. So the presenter who's answering the questions. But at any time you can have everybody in gallery view, which is just a really nice way to kind of engage folks. Um, you as a producer can also sit here and you can add to spotlight. So maybe these are the two people who, you know, my phone asked a question of the speaker. So I'm adding them to spotlight. And then I'm just gonna move them from spotlight and we're back to the speaker. Now, one thing you will notice is I'm in gallery review right now. And if I add someone to spotlight, it does jump everybody back to speaker view. So again, Zoom is great at letting you control the speaker view, not so much the gallery, but it is something you can achieve if this is important to you for your event. It just involves you asking your attendees to do something versus when you're using spotlighting, you are really controlling everything that the person is seeing and you're not you know, they don't have to touch anything for your view to change. And one more note that I will make here is if you are doing a cloud recording, you would be capturing both the speaker view, which is just your presenter who's spotlit or whoever you have spotlit one. Again, my caveat's always one speaker who's spotlit 
And you can also select on your back end that you capture gallery view. And you can try to splice them in post-production together if you would like, and that's something that's kind of fun if you do want to be in gallery view during your Q&A in your final recording. But as long as you have checked those boxes on the back of zoom.com that you want to capture essentially every view when it comes to the cloud recording, then you would capture that gallery view and those speaker view. The only caveat is they are just separate files instead of one. That brings me to the end of my video about uh, spotlighting and then going into gallery view. Hopefully that helps the next time you're trying to make a seamless transition into your Q&A or maybe a larger group discussion. As always, I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer. This has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning, virtual event production, Zoom, in-person event production, and running your own business. Thanks for joining me and I'll talk to you again next Monday. Bye. <laughs>